Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about a list of derivatives and antiderivatives. Everything on this list here, I've got all my derivatives on this side, common derivative rules, and all my um, common indefinite integral rules on the right side. So everything you see here, all 28 of these rules, are rules that you should have memorized. Okay, if we were meeting face to face and I would be having quizzes on this almost every class period. All right. So uh, you need to have this readily available, readily know how to take the integral, readily know how to take the derivative of any of these functions. You need to be able to look and say, oh, OK, I need to take the derivative of sine x. I don't need to reference that. That's cosine x. Or, oh, I need to integrate sine x. I don't need to reference. That's negative cosine x. So if you don't have these down by now, the derivative rules, I promise you, once you start trying to integrate these things, you're going to get your sines and your cosines mixed up. It happens to the best of them, okay? So you got to have these memorized. There's just no way around it. Take the time. Put them on note cards. I don't care what you do. But you need to memorize everything on these two uh, lists for common derivatives and integrals. So I'm going to zoom in just to make sure um, you get you can see each of these and you can screenshot it and um, pause the video um, at any point looking at all those so that you have them all close up. Now a couple of rules I do want to talk about on um, the integrals. This first rule here this is if I have a constant inside of my integrand. What it says is I can pull the constant out of the integrand and multiply the indefinite integral by the constant, and I still get the same answer. This next one here, and before I move on to the next one, um, just to make sure we understand, if I had like the integral of 3x squared dx, this is equal to 3 times the integral of x squared dx. I literally take the 3 and I move it to the outside. That's the constant multiple rule. Very common rule used. Okay. Uh, the next one we talked about earlier, the sum and difference rule in a previous video. This is how we are able to split it up and divide and conquer an, an integral. Okay. So this allows us to divide the integral up over plus and minuses and it becomes the integral basically all we're saying here is that the integral of the sum is equal to the sum of the integrals or the integral of the difference okay is equal to the um, difference of the two integrals all right so let's do an example um, with this example here, I have x multiplied by x squared plus 3 in here. We don't have uh, techniques to handle the integral of, oh, that's not a good color, the integral of a function times another function dx. We don't have those techniques right now. So what I need to do is I need to multiply this out, okay? So if I multiply this out, what do I get? Well, x times x squared is x cubed, and x times 3 is 3x. So the integrand becomes x cubed plus 3x dx. Now I can use my um, constant multiple rule and my sum and difference rule. How so? I see a sum here. I'm going to break this up <clears throat> into uh, two integrals. And so when I break this up into two integrals, I can integrate the pieces individually. The integral of x cubed happens to be what? Well, it happens to be add 1 to the exponent, so that's 3 plus 1 gives me 4. Divide by the exponent, what's the exponent 4? So I'm going to divide by 4. In the second, the second part here, um, I'm going to integrate 3x. 
The exponent is understood to be a 1 because there's no number there. It's understood to be a 1. So I add 1 to 1, I get 2, and then I divide by 2. Okay, so I've integrated each piece individually, and then I, don't forget your plus C there. If you want to see this written out using the constant multiple rule and the sum difference rule, this is equal to the integral of x cubed dx plus, and then the constant multiple rule, I pull the 3 out, and I have x dx here. So I have two integral rules, and then that's the sum and difference, and then the constant multiple rule, I can pull the 3 out there. So these two things are equal to each other. And then you just integrate each piece individually. x cubed integrated gets you x to the fourth over 4, and then x integrated gets you x squared over 2. Okay, next up, another um, algebra trick that's going to help you out. <coughs> Excuse me. With this one here, I have a polynomial divided by a polynomial. This is a rational. Now, rationals, kind of complicated. Uh, invert, doing the undoing the quotient rule uh, probably wouldn't be the funnest thing to do. So what we're going to do first is we're going to algebraically simplify just like we multiplied out here. I'm going to divide out here. Okay, so what do I mean by that? If I go back to algebra days, if I have like a 3 plus 6 plus 9 divided by 3. So to do this, I would take 3 divided by 3 plus 6 divided by 3 plus 9 divided by 3. Okay, each piece in the numerator is separated by a plus sign here. If it's a plus or a minus sign separating it, there's only that x and that 3 in the denominator. I'm dividing each thing by 3. So I'm going to do the same thing with my uh, square root that I'm dividing each um, part of this polynomial by the square root of x. So what does this become? It becomes x cubed divided by the square root of x, which I can rewrite square root of x as x to the 1 half. And then the next part, I have 5x divided by x to the 1 half. And then the last part, I have negative 1 divided by x to the 1 half, dx. Now, um, each of these pieces can be simplified from here. Algebraically simplify. Whenever I'm dividing, I subtract the exponent. So if I have x to the 5 over x cubed, you think about this, this is really like x, 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 right? And that's x, x, x. What happens? These x's, these x's, and those x's cancel. I'm just left with x squared, right? The quick way to do this is to do x to the 5 minus 3, which gets you x squared. I subtract the denominator exponent from the uh, numerator exponent. So I'm going to do that here. Um for x cubed divided by x to the 1 half. And so whenever I subtract, I have 3 minus 1 half, it gets me 2 and a half, which is also known as 5 halves. And then when I do 1 minus a half, I get a half, positive a half. And then whenever I do, ooh, what do I do here? What is that? Well, technically, 1 over x to the 1 half is x to the 0 over x to the 1 half, right? And so this is 0 minus 1 half, which is x to the negative 1 half there, okay? Or you just use your um, reciprocal property technique that if you have a positive denominator down here, then you have a negative when you do the reciprocal, okay? So this becomes negative x to the negative 1 half. Now I'm going to use the power rule for each of these. I'm going to add 1 to 5 halves. So if I add 1 to 5 halves, I get 7 halves. Once I add to it, I divide by it. And then I'm going to add 1 to 1 half gets me 3 halves. And then I'm going to divide by 3 halves. And then I'm going to add 1 to negative a half. And that gives me a positive a half. And I'm going to divide by it. Okay, I can simplify this. Simplifying this, dividing a fraction, easy as pie. All you got to do is flip and multiply. So I do, 
I do keep, change, flip. How does keep, change, flip work? I keep the numerator the same. I change the denominator, I change from division to multiplication, and then I flip the denominator, okay? So I flip it, so I do two, seven, two sevenths multiplied, remember it's the reciprocal there, um, by this right here, okay? And then same thing for this part here. The five stays the same, I flip this, so I have two over three times five, so two times five, and then uh, three times one, so that's 10 over three. And so that gets me x to the three halves, um, 10 over three for my coefficient in front there. And then the, ne the negative one half turns into negative two. And then I plus c it, okay? And so that kind of takes care of two little uh, algebra tricks you might see where you have to multiply to distribute it out or you take, you have a division and you divide each piece by that denominator. And then simplify, divide and conquer. These are the two, two rules that are definitely gonna help you out. Dividing and conquering, and then pulling the constant out. Those are gonna be very helpful to you, okay? Um, just, you know, for a little bit of extra here, um, say I wanna take the, the um, antiderivative the indefinite integral of x to the pi. Well, what does the power rule say for integration? Well, what does it say? It says I add one to the exponent and divide by what that new exponent is. So if I add one to pi, I get x to the pi plus one, and then I divide by pi plus one. Is that my final answer? Ooh, that's not it, right? I also have a plus c there. Okay, so don't forget the plus C. And then one more just to make sure, let's flip it around. Instead of the denominator being the variable, I'm gonna make the exponent the variable. So the base is a number, so this is an exponential we're integrating. Now if you'll recall, when I took the derivative of an exponential, the derivative with a base A was equal to ln A times A to the X, right? Now, the opposite of the derivative is the integral. So in the opposite of multiplying by ln a is dividing by ln a, and that's what we're doing there. Multiplying by the reciprocal is the same thing as dividing. So it's still a to the x, the base to the x, but then I divide by ln of what the base is. So the integral here of pi to the x is pi to the x, times 1 over ln pi plus c, okay? So uh, hopefully hopefully you have a chance to memorize these, uh, this list of common derivatives and antiderivatives, and I promise you it will serve you well for the rest of the semester, and if you plan on taking calculus too, uh, you're going you're gonna to have to know these backwards and forwards.